again, everybody, with a man who likes to live in the past for the best reasons. He's John Dodds. I'm Tom Pippins. Welcome to another edition of the Marquette Hoops Basketball Show. We are proudly brought to you by Moonlight Graham, Modern Dental Benefits. Moonlight Graham, a great teammate of Marquette Hoops. We cannot thank them enough. And, J.D., a tough loss against Creighton on Saturday as we're speaking, a couple hours or so. They're going to host Butler. It, just so close, but a couple of bad mistakes, and they just can't seem to break through in those tight games lately. Yeah, Shaka mentioned in the game that they were right there, but they just couldn't finish it. They had some missed layups, four key turnovers down the stretch. But it's tough to win in the Big East. Mm -hmm. And the uh, what's interesting is they've had tough losses against UConn, Butler, and now Creighton. And each, each of those games were high level, played at a high level, and each time the opponent said that this is the best game we've put together all year. Mm -hmm. So to beat Marquette, you got to bring it and you got to play very well. That's nice to hear, but uh, there's still losses, which is tough. So they started off 3-0 and and then went 7-0. and Excuse me, they started off 0-3, yep. then 7-0, and and now it's been 2-4. and So, uh, and when you look at the teams they're playing the rest of the year, it sure looks like uh, these teams are peaking. Butler's playing a lot better. St. John's is playing a lot better. Even DePaul, with their rebounding and length, gives Marquette a matchup problem. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be tough the rest of the way. And as you say, a long season, tired young legs, but a win over the Bulldogs would be victory number 18 in Shaka Smart's first season, 10 in the Big East, and hopefully NC2A tournament bound. One of the great aspects about this show that John Dodds brings to it is connections. We, we like to go historical and also recruiting, ladies and gentlemen. And Mark Miller from the Wisconsin Basketball Yearbook is just the man to bring in at this time. So here is Mark Miller, brought to you by Moonlight Graham. I've heard Shaka Smart mention that the, the future of college basketball is you have to have a full complement of 13 players because you never know year to year who's going to stay, who's going to go. Mm -hmm. And what's interesting about Marquette is the, the youth, he brought nine people in, and two of them were seniors, uh, Marcel and uh, Queth. Uh, they will be leaving. And Greg Elliott, Greg Elliott told us, I asked Greg Elliott, uh, are, you a, are you a redshirt junior? <laughs> are you a redshirt senior? Or He's 45 what? years old, yeah. isn't he? <laughs> and uh, I remember Homer, Homer introduced Chris O'Toole one time and said he's the only player who will ever be a uh, tenured professor <laughs> while he was at Marquette. So that one, so I think Greg Elliott's well on his way. I, you don't know what Greg Elliott's going to do if he wants. I, I think ultimately Greg Elliott's going to be a coach hmm. because uh, I know the Wojo and his staff were really impressed with his basketball acumen and kind of he does a lot of coaching with his, on the, for his teammates. Kind of his young teammates mm -hmm. showing the ropes. So mm -hmm. I think that's in his future. Plus, he's had a lot of injuries. He suffered uh, mm -hmm. shoulder, he suffered uh, leg injuries, over wrist injuries, over the uh, thumb injuries, over the, over the, uh, the era. But uh, it, it's going to be interesting to see uh, how many people are going to be um, here and how many more. So in this class of 2022, They've added Sean Jones, they've added Chase Ross, and now uh, Ben Gold. So you have a point guard in Jones and uh, the two guard in Chase Ross. Could you talk, briefly talk about those, those players, the other players in the, uh, the 22 class? Sure. Uh, you know, Sean Jones reminds me a little of Dominique James, uh, not, not in his vers uh, verticality. Uh, you know, Dominique was on a was crazy athletic in terms of you know getting up and throwing the ball down but um, just in terms of his his, his uh, aggressiveness his strength he's very strong he's got really powerful legs a guy that can really get into the lane and create for himself and his teammates uh, good good on ball defender he's a little on the short side uh, at 511 but he makes up for that with his tenacity and his toughness I think he's a, a, a you know a guy that's going to come in and, and uh, really push for minutes immediately because of his quickness with the ball. Um, his quickness guarding on the perimeter is going to help Marquette. Um, so, you know, he, he, he's kind of a dynamic player. I think people are going to enjoy watching him play. And as far as Chase Ross goes, uh, you know, he's got good size at about 6'5", a good overall player in, in the sense of moving the ball and making the pass, the extra pass, 
uh, and also a very good shooter from the perimeter. Uh, pretty good going to the basket. So, um, you know, he, I kind of, you look at the roster and you talked about uh, Greg Elliott, you know, he'd probably fit somewhat of Greg's role if Greg is not back next year. Um, and if Greg is back, then, you know, he can, he can learn from a, a grizzled veteran because <laughs> uh, Greg, uh, uh, th- that would be a sixth year, I believe, at Marquette next year because he, he took a redshirt year and has played. This is his fourth year of playing, so that's five years. And then, of course, the NCAA rule of granting him an extra year would be a sixth. So, I, I, I don't, it'll be very curious. I agree with you, Jen. I, I'm really curious to see what his plans are for next year. If if all the guys that are currently in the program come back and the three. Uh, uh, um, recruits all come in, then Marquette's at 13 uh, for next year. Um, yeah, losing Queth and um, uh, Marcel and having only 12 on scholarship this year. So that, that would be 13 with the three newcomers. So it'd be interesting to see, you know, where everything goes with that. But, um, you know, I, I think one thing uh, uh, that people forget, you know, when sometimes when you watch the team this year and you're like, geez, they really struggle rebounding the ball at times. They could really use a, a real powerful rebounder. Well, uh, everyone would be a year older next year. Um, plus, they they bring in uh, a guy like uh, uh, Gold, who's six ten, and then they also have a redshirt this year. Uh, Keenan, uh, I, I never can pronounce his last name, John. Maybe you know, but, but Keenan, six yep. nine, and he's about two fifteen. So he's another big body that you know can. Uh, that has done well in practices and so forth this year um, that, that uh, you know, could help on the glass next year. Kean won the slam dunk contest at uh, Madness. So that tells you how athletic he is. And, um, but you know, the interesting, watching the, the Georgetown game this week, uh, when Cam Jones went off and uh, after a while I started calling him Cam Van Exel because he looked just sensational like a lefty like Nicky Van Exel, herky-jerky, and the long-range shot. But he's, his game is kind of on the ground, kind of like Lazar Hayward's was his first couple of years, Kerry Trotter, maybe a Sam Worthen. He uses the spins and the, uh, and the, uh, the English off the board. Was, Sam Worthen always, I always felt watching Sam Worthen that he was playing pool, and he was using the bumpers and the spins to, to make the baskets. But um, when I look at Chase Ross, I see Cam Jones, but he's got a little bit more Jimmy Butler in him. He can finish through the lane at the rim with some explosion at the rim, uh, which is different than Ross, uh, or different than uh, uh, Cam Jones. Cam Jones, I think, if he gets, he is so much bigger working with Todd Smith right now. I, he has to be 10 pounds heavier than he was maybe four or five months ago. Very strong. And like Lazar, who after four years could finish, I think Jones will be able to do that in a couple of years. But Ross compliments him. He's a better, seems to be better explosion through the lane to the hoop. Right, right. So he'd probably be a little bit more like Omax than, um, than Cam Jones. Because Omax can also make some perimeter shots. But he's, when you think of him, you probably think more uh, going to the basket. Uh, but... You know he's got the, the uh, he's got both. You know he can he can shoot and he can go to the basket and uh, and Ross can do both of those things as, as well. Um, and I, I agree with you, John. I think Cam will get there uh, in terms of that. But you know he's also not quite as big as Omax or Ross in terms of his height. So uh, it's hard, it's always harder when you go in the into the post or get try to get to the basket in the Big East when you got you know. Guys from UConn and Villanova uh, waiting for you there. So you got to be really strong and you got to be really explosive. Mark, I have a twofold for you, if I may. Will these kids be able to play right away from this class of 22? And how good a recruiter is Shaka Smart? Well, I think Shaka as a recruiter um, is what you guys see when you see him interviewed. You know, he's a very honest, he's a very transparent. Uh, and, and truthfully, uh, especially compared to Wojo, uh, just a very open book on uh, maybe not necessarily recruiting, but but certainly on on the team, um, on the, on the players, on, on on life in general. I mean, his his philosophies and his 
uh, the things that he says transcend basketball. I think a lot of times, you know, you listen to him and it's like, wow, yeah, you could apply some of those principles just to your life. So I think when he goes into a, a, a recruit's home and talks with the recruit and with the parents and so forth, that's who he is. You know, there's nothing, there's nothing hidden with him. Um, you know, I think he, he first and foremost last night on the, on the television broadcast, I think Don, Daniel Marshall said, uh, Donnie Marshall, uh, the analyst on the TV program said that, you know, more than anything, he's a shaper of young men. Um, you know, he's a, he's a mentor to, to guys that are 18 to 22, 23 years old. And, um, boy, you know, when I heard that, I'm thinking, gosh, that's how could Marquette want, how could they have anyone better? And, you know, I mean, that's what you want in a, in a coach. Um, so I, I, that to me, I think, uh, he, he wins people over of because of who he is at his core. Uh, no, you know, I, I think of, uh, I think of Kevin O'Neill when he was first here and he, you know, be at airports in gorilla suits and do kind of goofy things to, to get recruited. <laughs> and, um, you know, I, 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 I don't see Shaka doing that. <laughs> <laughs> as far as the, um, as far as the guys and their ability to come in and play right away, Tom, I, I'm, I'm not really sure. I mean, I, it'd be easy to sit here and say, Hey, this kid's going to, he's going to start from day one. But you know, when, when you go away for college and you know, you get those first couple months where you're doing workouts and, but you're not in practice hasn't started yet. And you're, you're getting used to your new surroundings in downtown Milwaukee and on the Marquette campus and meeting people and professors and classes. And then all of a sudden basketball, kicks into full gear and, and you're going up against guys that are mature men in terms of their basketball ability, it gets pretty difficult. Um, that having said that, I, I think the one that probably, you know, I guess I'll go out a little bit of a limb. The one that I think probably has the best chance to see immediate action would be, would be Sean Jones, just because of what he brings to the table in terms of his, uh, his explosiveness, his, his quickness, and, and his ability uh, to make other players better by, by making those great passes. We see that with Tyler Kolek a lot, that he, you know, makes those great passes that, that lead to dunks for, for Queth or for uh, Igodaro. And I, I think we'll see some of that from Sean as well. Just wanted to get your overall assessment in terms of, do you see a, a, a commitment or an outreach to Wisconsin? And it seems like I've heard a lot more about Chicago and Illinois than I have maybe in the last 10, 15 years with, uh, with Wojo or Buzz and even Tom Crean. Yeah, um, I think in terms of ours reaching out to the Wisconsin high school coaches and, and uh, teams with or even without, you know, potential college prospects, uh, he's been fantastic. I mean, uh, uh, I was talking with Jason Atanasoff, the coach at Racine Prairie recently. They played St. Cats at, at the Five Serve in an afternoon game uh, earlier this week. Um, and, uh, you know, how they have those those high school games during the afternoon and then the, the team stick around and watch the Bucks play at night. Well, they had some time off after their game before the Bucks started. And, uh, he was able to bring his entire high school team in to watch a Marquette practice. And I thought, wow, that's a, that's a great experience for those kids to – to see how hard they, they, they compete and how hard they're being coached and their response to that, the enthusiasm that they have, everything that goes into a practice. Um, and some of it might might seem a little tedious, but of course it, it's all important in the grand scheme of things. So, um, you know, I haven't talked to a high school coach yet who, had, who wanted to watch a practice and, and was denied entry. I mean, they, 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 like you said, John, they're very open about things like that. And, uh, you know, I think that, uh, you know, I know he's sent out offers to a, a few Wisconsin high school kids, Milan um, Monchiliovich, but Nick Janowski at Pewaukee and uh, Con Knipple at Wisconsin Lutheran. And, you know, they're looking at uh, some of the other really talented young players in our state that I think uh, probably for too long will we'll get scholarship offers. So um, the outreach, not only in Wisconsin, but even in, in the greater Chicago area and over in Minneapolis, St. Paul and and truthfully throughout the U S and even beyond it has been really good. So I, I don't think there'll be any, um, uh, you know, I think if there's a player and they feel that they fit what Marquette does and, uh, on and off the court and, uh, they like what they, that person does, they'll recruit him. Doesn't matter if he's from, you know, Brookfield like Dave Joplin or, or California or Australia. Um, you know, they're, they're going to go, they're going to recruit guys, uh, that fit 
what they uh, want in a player and that fits the Marquette basketball culture. Mark Miller, Wisconsin Basketball Yearbook. Nobody does it better when it comes to recruiting, and that's why your connection, John Dodds, is fabulous. Uh, before we leave you with our great thanks, Mark, just any comments in general about Shaka, about the program, and, and where you think down the line this, this program can, can it be a perennial entrant into the NC2A tournament? I know, again, crystal well, ball, I think for but. Sure it can be. Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, uh, you know, I think it's been, uh, it's been, a, well, I know it's been since uh, Buzz's second last year since they won an NCAA tournament game, so it's been a few years. Um, and Wojo got there a few times, but, um, you know, I, I, I do think that, that it can be a perennial uh, NCAA tournament team, but it takes hard work, uh, it, it, it takes commitment. Uh, which I think the university has certainly given to the men's basketball program. Um, and it takes a little bit of luck. You got to find uh, those Dwayne Wades out there, you know, um, uh, and develop players. Um, but with, with what, uh, you know, the, the blueprint for that Shaka has for, for a basketball program, um, I, I think that the, there's every reason to be very hopeful that that could indeed happen. Um, now, every now and then you're going to have a season where maybe injuries or, you know, chemistry isn't quite where you thought it would be or the league is just incredibly brutal and you, you just come up a little short. But um, I think at the very least, Tom, that the, every year they should be at least competing for um, a tournament spot. Um, and uh, we see that this year in year one. And quite honestly, if you, if you had told me that at the beginning of this year, I, I would have been very skeptical just because of all the new faces and, and, the, and you know, the conference that they play in. And I thought they... They really played a very aggressive non-conference schedule against some really good teams. So um, they're exceeding expectations in year one, but that doesn't mean that that will happen in year two without, uh, you know, without a little luck and without a lot of hard work. Mark, can you tell us uh, where we can, uh, where the viewers can find your uh, yearbook website and uh, maybe order your yearbook, which is sensational each year? Yeah, uh, the yearbook is still for sale for this year. We know the season's going to come into a close here in the next couple of weeks, but uh, it's at WBBY.com. And then uh, I just want to put a quick plug in, too. Uh, I write uh, uh, articles three, four, or five times a week for Wisports.net on the high school basketball scene in Wisconsin. So I'm constantly out at games. I think I've been uh, over 65 games this year, uh, watching kids, interviewing coaches, uh, not only at the, the, the big time programs, but also those, uh, you know, those, those smaller communities where you go to a, a Friday night game and the gym's packed and the band's playing and the cheerleaders are on the floor or the dance team. And, um, you know, we got a great environment for a, a conference rivalry game. So that's another place where if you want to, you know, check out um, high school basketball uh, in particular that uh, you can find some of the stuff that I do. Mark Miller, you are the very best. God bless you and your family, and thanks for what you contribute to MarquetteHoops.com. We are very grateful. See you again soon, I hope. Okay, thanks for having me on, guys. Appreciate it. Absolutely. We appreciate the expertise, the time of Mark Miller from the Wisconsin Basketball Yearbook, again brought to you by Moonlight Graham. And that gets us into Ben Steele, the fine Marquette beat writer for the Milwaukee Journal Sentinel, John Dodds. Yeah, Ben's a good read. He covers Marquette with a passion. And uh, in this interview, we asked him uh, really to talk about the individual players and his thoughts about Shaka. Okay, let's get right to it. You look at uh, Justin Lewis, and boy, he, he shows some skills, doesn't he? And I was impressed when Shaka, after uh, Marquette game on the radio with Homer, he said, Night in and night out, Justin Lewis is the strongest player on the floor. Do you see that, mm -hmm. Ben? Absolutely. Like, Justin Lewis is a guy you got to see in person. Just his physical body is just amazing. He's got really long arms. His hands are, are huge. He's got, like, big mitts as hands. But his lower body is just, like, he's got, like, big tree oak legs. And, and he, you see how he uses it on the court. Like, he gets a mismatch. He gets a smaller guy on him. He can back them down. Uh, that creates problems for the defense. He's a really good passer. So when they double team him, he can he can find shooters on the outside. And he's probably their best rebounder too. Um, and although he's playing more on the perimeter this year than he did last year as a freshman, he still uses those physical tools on on the on the backboard. Um, yeah, he's a he's a really impressive player. And NBA scouts have definitely taken notice of that that physical strength. 
-hmm. With COVID, we, uh, people in the media have not had a lot of access to the players. And the first right. time he had been here a year, and the first time I ever met him and interviewed him in person, um, side to side with the microphone, was at the block party last summer. And mm -hmm. what, what struck me about the whole interview was he said how happy and excited he was to be at the block party because he wanted to, he hadn't had the opportunity to meet Marquette fans and people who love Marquette basketball just like he does. And he had met some of the people there. And I thought, what a, what a sad commentary, this COVID. It's just, mm -hmm. it's been yeah. just a real, wild ride for media for players yeah. um, but he's a real enthusiastic guy and then there's greg elliott again i said tell me about tell me about justin uh, lewis and he said he hasn't been able to miss in practice from mm. the outside even three point shots he, he said from the end of the season after he recovered from that uh, fully recovered from his uh, foot injury mm -hmm. yeah he's a uh... He's another guy. Like his his form on a shot was always good. His rota the rotation on the ball was always good. It just never, it just wasn't falling for him. Last year, I think he shot twenty percent on threes. I don't have the numbers in front of me, but and he struggled early in the season this year too. But starting during that winning streak, especially that game against Villanova where he took over at the end and hit that big three to clinch the the victory at Villanova. You just see the confidence skyrocket in his shot, and he's been knocking down shots ever since then. Daryl Morcel. Daryl Morcel takes, you mentioned him before, he gets more punishment. He can give out punishment, but he takes punishment. The Big East referees, I've never quite understood. It seems like the first 10 minutes of the game, anything goes. Body blocks. Morcel will come around to pick, and he'll just get jacked. And mm. I think it's uh, sometimes when I see him, he'll – He'll have the twenty-point game, but then he'll have the mm -hmm. the no score. I think he's dealing with some probably aches and pains from a, a long yeah. season. But talk about his leadership and what he's what he's done this year. Yeah, Daryl is uh, he's a really tough guy. Um, he's from Baltimore. Uh, I think his dad was a, a dock worker in, in Baltimore, so he's got the the tough, hard work, ethic upbringing. Um, he's a uh, you know, it's funny, when I talked to him at Big East Media Day way back in October, he was the one guy that said it was laughable. I think that was his direct quote, that it was laughable that Marquette was picked to finish ninth in the Big East. And he knew that this was, was going to be a good team. And, and Daryl, he's like a really serious guy when you talk to him, really intense. Uh, so when he says something like that, he kind of take notice of it, you know. Um, but he brings that same kind of seriousness and, and, and toughness to the basketball court. Darrell was the defensive player of the year in the Big Ten last year at Maryland. And I think the year before, Maryland played Marquette in uh, Orlando at the Thanksgiving tournament. And right. Darrell did the best job, I think, of anyone I ever saw guard Marcus Howard. I think he held him to 12 points, and it was like 5 or 17 shooting. Um, so he really relishes those challenges, like, guarding the other team's the best player, shutting down a, a guy like Marcus Howard, who, who was leading the nation and scoring at the time. They were just coming off like 50 point games in that Orlando tournament. Um, so he just brings that intensity. Um, and he's really like setting the tone for that, that, that violence that Shaka talks about. He's the kind of guy that, that, that spearheads that sort of mentality. Marcel's shooting stats were impacted last year because he partially tore his labrum in his right shoulder in um, I think it was January, and he wanted to play yeah. through it, and he did, and then he fully tore it in February just before the, the madness. So he said, I don't want surgery, I want to play for the team. So he kept, he just strapped, he had a strap, some type of strap or a harness or whatever, and he, he kept yeah. playing, which, which really shows his toughness. Then he couldn't shoot for probably, I think it was four months after the surgery. So he had the surgery in uh, late March, and uh, mm -hmm. boy, he came back. And Jay Wright was Jay Wright mentioned, and you were at the press conference when uh, post game press conference when Jay Wright mentioned, "Wow, when I saw that Marcel had transferred to Marquette in the portal, yeah. I said, wow, that's going to yeah. be a problem." Yeah, because he he said he recruited him too out of out of Baltimore. He really really wanted him. Really wanted that toughness. And if you know if, if Jay Wright sees that toughness in you, you know you know you got it. Omax Prosper is a guy that. I remember watching him last fall and thinking this guy is a uh, 
kind of a six eight skinnier version of Wesley Matthews. He's tough. He's all over the court and. That guy has a ceiling that's, if that ever gets tapped at Marquette, that's going to be a really interesting player to watch. And again, Jay Wright was very complimentary. Kind of like John Thompson III was complimentary when uh, uh, Juan Anderson was at the top of the Marquette Wojo 131 half court trap. Yeah. He said that Juan Anderson really presents problems. Jay Wright said the same thing that the length of Prosper really impacts him in the backcourt. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like 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 Juan Omax is the guy at the front of the that one two two pressure that that Marquette likes to throw in, and you know he's six nine, he's got long arms, he's super athletic. Um, so that's that's tough for opposing point guards to to deal with when you're when you're bringing the ball up, and that kind of disrupts your offensive flow. And that's what Jay Wright was talking about. Like they just never got comfortable playing against Marquette because they were just their rhythm and timing were just thrown off by by that pressure, and it starts with with Omax at the top. And yeah, he's really come along like the last couple weeks, you know, it was a rough start to the season for him. Uh, he was in the starting lineup, then he was out of the starting lineup for a little bit because they were uh, the numbers for the, the starting lineup that they worked that Marquette wasn't starting games very well. So they pulled old Max from the starting lineup, then they brought him back in. And since he's been back in the starting lineup, he's been he's been really uh, uh, just sparking Marquette with his with his activity on the defensive low. I, I, I asked Shock about this yesterday, just because his his numbers don't exactly jump off the page at, the, at a box score, but he really impacts the games in other ways with the with his defensive activity and all that. That's Ben Steele from the Milwaukee Journal Sentinel, an outstanding beat writer for years and still going strong. And he is brought to you by Moonlight Graham. John, as we get set to wrap up here, take us big picture in the first season for Shaka Smart in a good position, not quite there yet. You would think for the big dance. You want to get probably to 10 wins, maybe 11, talk about seeding. Uh, winning in the Big East is tough, no matter what it is. And it's just a remarkable job that Shaka and the staff have done with all these new players, fitting them together. And it's remarkable. I've never quite seen a team like this where there's eight or nine guys that can score 20 points in a game. Usually three of them will have good games. Some of them won't unexpectedly. For example, against Creighton, Prosper, and Kolick struggled. But then Cam Jones and Marcel were tremendous. Justin Lewis seems to be the guy every, every game. But I would say be patient. You just don't know. They're still young, feeling it out. New roles this year. We're coming to the end of the year. And hopefully they can put it together. But just get to 10 and 11 wins. He's John Dodds. I'm Tom Pippins. Our marvelous producer is Jason Ruck. We're having a lot of fun on the Marquette Hoops basketball show on My24. Look forward to seeing you next Saturday morning at 1030. Once again, proudly brought to you by Moonlight Graham, modern dental benefits. Moonlight Graham, a great teammate of Marquette Hoops. We appreciate them and you. God bless everybody. See you next week.